once again, the Pharisees and scribes are grumbling, and Jesus is fellowshipping with tax collectors and sinners. This time, though, Jesus tells two parables, and he tells the famous parables of the lost sheep and the lost coin. A shepherd loses one of his sheep, goes out searching, leaving the other 99 kind of perplexing sheep behind, finally finds the sheep, rejoices, and basically throws a party. A woman, on the other hand, loses one of her ten silver coins. She lights a lamp, sweeps the house, and searches carefully. Eventually she does find it, and then she rejoices and throws a party probably worth more than one silver coin. This week, I'd like to look at these parables through the lens of community. And to do that, I would like to start by talking about what happened last week. Last week, Pastor Kelly cleverly asked us a simple question. Who are we? She had us circle adjectives on a gold piece of paper, thinking about the adjectives that describe our church. Thinking about why we circled certain ones and why we didn't circle others. She then had us place the adjective sheet underneath our seats. And then she told us good news. She told us that we were fearfully and wonderfully made by God. And then she went on to say, and I quote, God has been with us, and God promises to always be with us. And while we do not always have those promises to hold on to with our human relationships, we have the opportunity right now as we return as a church to our foundation and our love for God and our love for one another, to commit to vulnerability, commit to engaging important conversation, commit to reminding each other that we are all loved and we are all enough, commit to stretching ourselves and our comfort zones for the sake of the gospel." End quote. I'd like to pick up right here with the story. After service in the potluck last week, Pastor Kelly and I went back to the parsonage before the youth group kicked off barbecue. I was talking to a friend on the phone and Pastor Kelly was doing some homework. Everything seemed pretty normal. Then the doorbell rang. Daniel, an immigrant from Romania with bad documents, was with his non-English speaking wife and two beautiful children, Fabio and Deanna. They were in their packed-in van and only had $42. Daniel began to explain to us that due to a medical condition that impacted his nerves, he was no longer able to work in the construction business. His boss, who had given him housing, fired him, seemingly leaving Daniel and his family homeless, and promising his wife to only go to churches and talk to pastors. Daniel found his way on Route 29 and saw our church with the sign out front, Welcome. Daniel was asking for our help to get to Texas, which is where his cousin, who had found him the job in New Jersey, lived. And he was asking us for help. And not knowing what to do at all, Pastor Kelly and I tried to come up with a game plan. For an hour, while Daniel and his family waited outside, we started calling people from lay leaders to friends to other pastors to our district superintendent. And going with our pastoral gut instinct and using our discretion, we gave them some money. But more importantly, however, it's what came next. We invited them to join us at the youth group kickoff event, and they accepted the invitation and followed us. There the kids were able to run around the yard, become fascinated by the pool, drink some milk, play with matchbox cars, while Daniel and his wife were able to eat a delicious meal and engage in conversation. And once they finished, we said a prayer for them, and they hit the road. I did call them on Wednesday to ask for their permission to tell the story and also to pray for them. And I asked if they had made it to their destination and they were in North Carolina on their way. Friends, this event made me fall in love with Christ Church in a new way. Our church was found community by Daniel and his family. It was because of the church and the love that comes with having that title. And what makes me rejoice 
and want to have a party like the shepherd and the woman is that the church was a community that was safe. The best part is we did have a party. <laughs> and I am grateful, grateful that our youth and their families didn't ask questions of their worthiness to be there or question why they were even there. We simply ate together and we fellowshiped together. The church was able to help someone who we will probably never see again. We are able to extend God's grace to a family who will never be able to repay us back. And indeed, this event stretched this church for the sake of the gospel. And this event encourages us to ask tough questions of who we are. <clears throat> grace space. This term was coined by a fellow seminarian in his senior chapel service just this past week. And he suggested that grace space is created when Jesus enters the picture, when love and forgiveness prevail. Grace space is created when people turn to God, when we repent. And grace space happens when people who are feel lost are found. They become seen. And grace space occurs when we commit to vulnerability, commit to engaging in important conversation, commit to reminding each other that we are all loved and that we are all enough. And we commit to stretching ourselves and our comfort zones for the sake of the gospel. Grace space forms in community, not just with one person. Community. The lost sheep is returning to the community of the 99. The community of 99 knows its shepherd, its God. The shepherd who puts the lost sheep on his shoulders and brings it back. And I would imagine that the lost sheep knows that it's returning back to community. And this sheep becomes restored, connected back to a community that won't go anywhere, that will embrace the sheep, that knows who its shepherd is. And if you would allow me to extend this metaphor, I think we've all been the lost sheep in coin. Perhaps you've been lost in not knowing what to do for a work project, or you've been lost and can't find the way out of all the stresses of work, or you've been lost with a recent diagnosis and don't know what to do, or you've been lost with, in the woods with an old map, you've been lost driving somewhere, or you've been lost without a home. Maybe you've been in a harmful relationship and felt lost, or you've been lost because that one you've loved has died. Paul's letter to Timothy reminds us that Paul himself was lost because Paul was a blasphemer, a persecutor of the church, and a man of violence. He tells us that himself. But then he received mercy, and the grace of the Lord overflowed for him with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Each time a sinner repents, God rejoices. The angels of God are overjoyed. When a person finds community, a party is thrown. That is what the kingdom of God looks like. It's what the kingdom of God does. And as the church, who have been lost and dead in sin, we have been saved. Hear Paul's words again. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. God in Christ Jesus came into the world to save us, to sit at table with tax collectors and sinners, to sit at table to feed us at his table. We have been the lost sheep who were lost to sin and death, but we've been saved by God. We are now a part of the 99 who rejoice when a lost person finds his or herself way to love, to grace space. And we rejoice by sharing our gifts. We rejoice by inviting to the table. And we rejoice by sharing the good news that God has indeed saved us in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We rejoice by telling the whole community 
John Gatha writes that the Christian community is like lost sheep, shivering in the cold, damp darkness, picked up gently and carried on the shoulders of Christ back to wholeness. We are the lost coin buried under clutter and debris, waiting for Christ to lift us high and celebrate because we have been found. We, we have been carried by Christ to this community in Titusville, New Jersey, to bring the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, just a little bit closer to earth. We are lost sheep, no doubt about it. But our gentle Christ will go to the ends of the earth to bring us back, to restore us back to community. I don't know Daniel and his family's religion. That wasn't important. But what I do know is, is that they did feel lost, like we sometimes find ourselves. They were afraid just like us. They were hungry just like us. And they are human just like us us. They sought love and safety in grace space because they know what the church is, a community that has been found, gathered together, and saved by its shepherd. I truly believe Jesus picked Daniel and his family up on his shoulders and had them ring the parsonage doorbell. And I believe God did this because he knows who we are, a found community made up of sinners, but grounded in the perfect Christ who saves us, who saves you. And this Jesus calls us to love God and love neighbor even more deeply and fully than we could ever imagine. So Titusville UMC, Pastor Kelly said this question will be asked a lot, and I will ask again, who are you? The way we answer this question will guide us in life, will guide us as a community. Because you never know who's going to ring your doorbell and be in need of grace space.